Um, I have got more than five lights. Um, I have got more than five lights. God bless you guys. God bless you guys. Got me five likes on my previous video so i want to say thank you guys for that so i have been thinking hard about this next video so this video now is about uh i want to give you guys five ways to position yourself for greatness now you may come up with more and i want you guys to write them down in the comment section you may you may think of more and i want to hear it so the one i've got is to be spiritually driven second kings 2 verse 9 10 talks about Elijah, uh, Elijah and basically he locks he asks Elijah for a double portion a double portion when he goes up when he, when he gets taken away when he dies he wants a double portion of what he had how many times guys do we actually ask God for a double portion when we're lacking do we ask God for a double portion even if we're not lacking do we even have the drive to ask God for more just in case just in case when your phone is on 50% battery you charge it up just in case you want that extra double charge just in case how many times do we ask God for a double portion just in case right so the second thing is prayer Prayer is very, very important. It, 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 it puts you in a position where you can talk to God and where God can talk to you. It's a two-way communication and that's great because what, what you're actually doing is you're actually, you're actually in a place spiritually where you can talk to God and, and that is great because not many people can talk to God freely and confidently. So prayer is good. It positions you very well okay and the third thing is fasting now i've got a scripture here uh in mark 9 25 to 29 and it says when jesus saw that the people came running together he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him, and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried, and rent him sore, and came out of him. And he was as none, uh, as, as one dead, insomuch that many said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he was come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could we not cast the demon down? And he said unto them, this is Jesus, This kind can come forth by nothing but prayer and fasting. This kind of links to the third reason I said before. You see, in order to break strongholds like that, because I believe when the guy had that spirit inside him, that that is the that is a really that's a that's a strong hold. A strong hold is when something has a strong hold of you, and you can't resist it. But Jesus was saying these type of situations, this situation, can only be done by fasting and prayer. Not fasting or prayer, but fasting and prayer. And the fourth one is one that I love so much. <clears throat> and it's a bargaining with Christ. You know, you can bargain. Because Hannah bargained with God. In 1 Samuel 1 verse 11, it says, And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wouldst indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid and remember me and not forget thy handmaid but will give unto thine handmaid a, 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 a man child then I will give unto the Lord all the days of his life and there shall and there shall no razor come upon his head 
God originally shut up Hannah's womb so she could not have children. But we see that Hannah wanted to have a child. So she bargained with God. She said, Lord, if you give me a child, Lord, I will give it back to you. I will give it back. You may have situations in your life where you might say, Lord, please, Lord, help me with this. But Lord, in return, I will do this. Hannah bargained with God. But what I love about Hannah, though, she came boldly. In Hebrews 4 verse 16, it said, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. I believe that's what God gave Hannah. Because she came boldly to the throne of grace. sometimes that's what we need to do we need to come boldly and the fifth one and maybe it should have been the first one is worship worship is great because it allows you to be at the place where you can hear from God personally when I worship sometimes I hear God speak to me and give me a message and sometimes when I finish worshiping I fall asleep because sometimes I like to worship at 10 or 11 o'clock at night. I fall asleep and I have a, I have a heavenly dream. God speaks to me in a dream. But worship is so... It, worship is, is the most in, intimate thing you can do to get close to God. It's one of the ultimate positions, I would say, that positions you for greatness because you're in a place where... You're just giving God the praise. And what you're actually doing as well, you're leaving yourself open for God to speak to you. You're putting yourself in a humble position saying, Lord, not my will, but let your will be done. But Lord, I give you praise. I give you thanks. So guys, I hope that helps. I hope you've actually gained something from this. Okay. So those are the, the five ways to position yourself for greatness. Now guys, if you actually did like this, I would like to get this video this video 10 likes 10 likes and a few subscribers if you can please just share this video 10 likes and a few subscribers because um i want to do more give me more suggestion guys of what actually you want me to speak about or just encouraging us just to keep on going okay so i do need the encouragement but guys um i hope that did kind of uh make you think about certain things because i believe we do need to I do believe we do need to position ourselves for greatness spiritually and it can even have an effect on the natural and it will. So God bless you guys.